up everybody it's april dawn i'm here to do a review for the center it comes on usa on wednesday nights so um first things first i'm recording on my computer today that's why the the screen is kind of grainy i'm in my room and just because it takes a lot less time to upload the video from my camera than it takes to upload from the computer it was like super fast so um this is my first time doing this one so you know I'm going to give it a whirl. Now, excuse my busted face, the grainy video. I got notes, though. I'm ready. Okay? So, this show is called The Center. It's with Jessica Biel. And Bill Pullman is in this show, if you know who those guys are. Jessica Biel is um, Justin Timberlake's wife. And um, she's really, I mean, she's a good actress. Don't get me wrong. But she's really known for her body. Her body is on point <laughs> at all times. She fine as hell. Okay? So, Jessica Bill, Bill Pullman, we know him. He's been in lots of different things. So, the premise of the show is, um, like I said, it comes on Wednesday nights. Before I say that, Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock on USA. So, you know, Wednesday night, we got a lot of stuff going on. Greenleaf is on. Um, Queen Sugar is on. Like, everything is on on Wednesday nights. But this is a good show, too. So, it's a limited series. So, it's only like seven or eight episodes. So, um, it shouldn't take too long for us to get to the answers that we want to get. Okay, so I went on and checked out the first show, and I thought it was pretty good. So, like I said, Jessica Biel plays a, a housewife. Her name is Cora. And at the beginning of the episode, we see her. She's having kind of a flash or like a dream. And um, it's a woman that's standing in the doorway, and she's basically telling her to come into the... come. Are you coming? I think she asked her, are you coming? And she turns, and when she walks into the room, these doors open, and I want to say it's something like a candelabra, but it's, you know, it's like a wall fixture, and it has a particular shape to it, and we see this shape repeated and brought to us over and over again throughout the episode. Now, to me, it looked like... Um, I would love to hear what you guys thought it was, because it's one of those things that's like a... Almost like, you know, you, you see when the people take the psychology tests or whatever and you go in, they show you a card and you have to figure out what what is on this card, right? What do you see on this card anyway? So in different, you know, ways you see things different, you know, will bring out or will illuminate different parts of your personality. So we see this same um, image several different times. To me, y'all, it looks like something that will be on maybe like drapes. Or like, um, you know, a very expensive comforter um, type of set, you know, pillow shams, you know, something that's very, very nice. And it has those embroidered um, patterns like into the fabric. So um, she sees this several different times throughout the TV show. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So like I said, her name is Cora. She works... I think she's a stay-at-home mom. She has a husband. They've only been married for three years. They have a son together. And I, I want to say she's a stay-at-home mother, and she helps her in-laws. Um, I don't know what they do for a living exactly, but she does books or inventory or something she does for the family, okay? And she does, she only comes in sometimes to help, but she doesn't, you know, she doesn't work there all the time. They live right next door to their neighbor. I mean, right next door to their in-laws as well and so you see her at the beginning she's trying to kind of get her husband to um talk the mother into letting him take a night off basically i want to say it was that night um from you know not having to eat dinner with the family or they eat dinner together all the time so you can tell like the parents are like very much in their lives okay and so you can tell some is a little off because throughout the beginning of the whole episode she's like they gazing off in the space and, you know, just feeding the baby and, like, she do a lot of this. Like, just looking off in the space for no reason. So, we can tell that something might be a little off there. I don't know. So, we'll just go ahead and, and um, yeah, she does end they eat. Yeah, got it. So, when they went home from dinner the first night, their house is literally five steps away. So, just think about this. You work with your husband. You a stay-at-home mom. Sometimes when you do go to work, you go into your husband's job, right? Excuse me. And then after you get off of work, you're going to go eat dinner with your husband's parents. And then you're going to go home and they're five steps away. Okay? So, that's a lot. That's a lot, and it kind of leads me to believe that maybe she didn't have the best childhood. That's why, you know, her husband or you get with somebody that have, like, a strong family because maybe your family was a little thrown off or someone right in your household when you was a kid. I'm not exactly sure, but um, um, we're going to find out some strange-ass things was happening in their house. Strange as hell, okay? So, 
Um, that night they go to bed, and you can see that the husband uh, he wants to have sex with his wife. Okay, so he's kind of kissing her, hugging her. He like it's Friday night, you know. They kiss and hug and whatnot. And he says, "Are you okay? I, I, did you said you felt better?" So she must say she was sick, or she's just not into sex. You can tell this is some type of issue because when he's kissing her, she's looking like I'm gonna throw up. You know, so she, he leaves and she takes her medicine and um. We don't know what kind of medicine it is, but it, she takes the medicine, and then she goes in there, and she has relations with her husband, and he's just on top of her. She looking like, I don't even much want to be here. Like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Like, like it was looking like, mm, like she ain't really want to be with her husband. So, she obviously have some type of issue with sex. Let me make sure, because she has several visions Um, when... Uh, yeah, she's seeing things. So she, um, when she was, yeah, having sex with the husband, I don't know. She maybe when she was asleep that night, she was having those visions of that that shape I told you about earlier. So like I said, it looked like bed sheets, curtains, wallpaper, very expensive, something like that with with the pattern embroidered patterns in them. So she starts seeing these things, you know, in her sleep. And so the next day she wakes up very early and she starts cleaning up the kitchen. She's taking everything out of the cabinet. She cleans up the kitchen. Apparently she's an extremely tidy person um, and she keeps things very clean in the house. So they did highlight that fact. I noticed that. So today they're going to the beach. So they get everything together. They go on out. So it's like a lake or like a national park where they have like a beach area or a lake area. And so she gets out there. Her friend is out there with her kid. There, you know, she says she wants to sit on the beach with her son. So she sits out there. He's making a little sand castle. And then her husband is doing something else. He comes back and she's like, okay, well, I'm going to get in the water. I want to go swimming. So she goes to get in the water and um, she swims out past the barrier where they have, they have like a little barrier that I guess to as you know once you get past here you know what i'm saying you can die or um don't go past this point or whatever but she swims out past that point and then she goes underwater um like i said at the beach before she got in the water there was more long gazes off to to looking into never never land okay so that was weird she gets out there her husband starts looking for her after a while um because when she gets out to a certain point in the water she goes under and I, I'm confused. I don't know if she's trying to kill herself. Like, what is going on at this point? Like, she goes under and she does not come back up immediately. She goes under. She's way out there past the barrier. So her husband, after a while, he can't see her. So he like, oh, my gosh, let's go start looking for your mama. So him and the son um, get up and they go start walking towards the water. And she comes up finally coughing and, you know, about to, about to die. Coughing and all of that. So she makes it to the shore and her husband is like, what's wrong with you? Why were you so far out there? And she just looks at him and tells him, I just wanted some quiet. I want to be alone. Okay, so he's looking like, what the hell? So they sit back down. And, you know, the kid is playing. And so basically over to the left of them, in front of them, there's there's two couples. And, you know, the girl is, t you know, two couples. So um, two girls, two guys. And so one of the couples, they're kissing with each other and all this. And the girl says, I want to play, um, let me play y'all this one song. So she puts the song on, and she says, this is, you know, whatever his name was. Yeah, and says, um, this is his uh, band from college, and, you know, they start playing a song or whatever. And so, you know, they laugh or whatever for a minute. And then after, she says, okay, I have one more song to play. And so uh, she starts playing the other song, and then we flash back over to Cora and her husband. She She's like, they need to turn that music down. Why don't they turn the music down? Her husband is like, you know, chill or whatever, you know, like... You know, because she's just staring at them like a crazy person. So, he's looking at her like, girl, what's wrong with you? And she like, they just want to turn the music down. And so, the girl started playing this other song. I don't know what triggered in her about this other song. But they started, the other couple, they started to kiss each other. And, you know, they was, he had his hands all over the girl's body. And the wife just, Cora just gets up runs across i forgot to say that she was peeling a piece of fruit with a knife so she gets up runs across it was about 15 feet away from them and stabs this man in his neck and on his chest and in his back and and on his arms and everywhere she could stab him she was like gah, 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 gah. i was like damn girl damn so her husband comes you know everybody's screaming on the beach her husband comes over there he um 
puts her on the ground. You know, he holding her hands down. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? People are screaming, trying to, you know, put the wound, you think, over the man's neck. You know, trying to get him to survive. And, you know, the wife is, she, Cora was just looking crazy. Like, I don't know. I don't know. She's just saying crazy stuff. You know, saying, I don't want to keep saying crazy. But you know what I mean? Like, she's just saying, she's just talking. And um, the husband is trying to calm her down, okay? So, the police arrive and she's arrested. Um, she wants, she keeps asking for her husband and the baby, but the husband kind of looks at her like, girl, he by the ambulance, like, girl, I do not, what the hell did you just do to these people, okay? Um, let's see, man in the car watching waitress, oh, okay, then we get to the, um, I guess this is a detective, this is Bill Pullman's character, he's the detective that's on the case, and so, what, the first time we meet him, it looked like he's stalking somebody in a, um, in a restaurant, she's the waitress, we don't know if she's his wife, his girlfriend, we don't know what, what she is, but he's staring at her with binoculars, he gets the phone call, and he goes to the scene, okay, so, um, she has already confessed, the, the victim's name is Frankie Belmont. Okay, let's remember that because I'm going to forget Frankie Belmont. So, Frankie Belmont is the victim. Um, and the other two detectives, they meet each other, okay? And um, th one thing about Bill Pullman's character is he likes to comment on, like, the trees, the plants, the flowers, wherever he go. He comments on, you know, different things. Like, he said something about the trees that was out there and the ecosystem being out of balance or whatever. So, you know. I don't exactly know what that means, but, you know, that's just something that's particular to his character. Okay, so um, we see Cora will go to jail. She's getting booked in, you know. she And when she gets in the shower, she also has another vision. You know, long gaze. The water is running down. You see the blood going on into the drain. And so the flashback is to her praying with her father. And so he, she's in the bed, and I'm assuming this is her father, is praying over her to go to sleep. And she, the little girl, she says, I don't want mama to come back. Because he said something about your little sister is coming back. And she says, I don't want mama to come back. So, um, I'm not exactly sure what that means. So, um, the husband and his parents are at home trying to process, you know, what has just happened in a family. It's crazy. This is crazy, right? So, um, they get, he gets a phone call from her. I mean, she's called him while she's in the jail and he doesn't answer the phone because he doesn't know what to say, y'all. He don't know what to say. So, she, now she's in the interrogation room. They come there to ask her questions about the murder. So, she... They asked her how long, you know, has she been married? She, she says, uh, do, they, do she have any family? The family, her family is dead. Um, she, and they, she asked them, because basically she like, I already said what I had to say. You know, I don't understand why I have to keep telling the story over again. I already told them I did it. And she, she's like, my family, you know, the fam, her family is dead. And so she basically asked, well, what's going to happen to me now? So he said, you're going to go to county jail, and then you're going to be held until your arraignment. Um, you know, then you will, she says she doesn't want a lawyer or, you know, if she plead guilty or not guilty or whatever at the hearing, she says she doesn't want a lawyer. And he says uh, a, a state attorney will be, you know, you will be afforded a public defender. And she says, I don't want a lawyer. Um, I already confess, you know, I just want to be done with it basically. So he asked her again, like I said, and she's like, why do I have to keep saying this? But she confirms that she stabbed the guy. She used the knife for the, the knife that she was using to um, peel the fruit. Okay, and she goes into another vision. Okay, um, before saying his neck, because she said, "I stabbed him in the neck. I stabbed him in the shoulder. I stabbed him. You know, all the different places she stabbed him." Okay, um, she goes into another slight vision of like the that shape or that embroidered pattern again, and so she says. Um, why, they say, why did you kill him? She said, she don't know. She just did it, okay? No, 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 I'm lying. She said, they say, why did you kill him? She says, the music. They had the music in, loud, and they kept turning it up. So, um, dude says, you know, the Bill Pullman's character, Detective, I forgot. I, I didn't get his name. I'm going to get it for the next review. But he basically says, look, I know you scared and everything, but, like, you don't just run over and kill people because their music is too loud. I mean, it has to be a reason why you killed this person or why you killed this guy. And she's like, you know, I don't know why. I don't have a reason. I don't know him. I never met him before in my life, okay? So, um, the, the detectives talk, and they basically say that, you know, all the people in the neighborhood say that she's a nice, friendly mom. You know, they don't have any problems with her. Um, she doesn't have any mental his, his illness in her family. Um... 
they said she's not the profile. Like, she don't know the guy or whatever. And usually, you know, she would fit the profile. But, you know, they said it's the impulse. Basically, the... Basically, they're saying she was not the type of person who, who would just run up on the beach and stab somebody in their neck a thousand times, okay? That's what we're saying about her, okay? So, um, detective says, you know, but you have to admit that this is strange, you know? When you run up on somebody and kill them in the middle of public, that's the emotion, that's the impulse. I mean, you have all these witnesses, you know, that can confirm what you did. So, basically, he was like, you know... The other cop says, well, it is strange that she doesn't fit the profile, but I just don't, you know, it is what it is. We got these witnesses, you know, the case is sold up. She she um said she did it, and, you know, the other guy, I guess he like the DA or the chief or whoever child, and, you know, he was like basically DA going to take the paperwork and they going to handle the business just is what it is, okay? So the husband um shows up at the police station. He says that he... um. He, I mean, I'm lying. He came, but he left. He turned around and left. He couldn't handle it. Okay, Cora's getting moved from the holding cell. She's about to get moved to county. Okay, and the detective um is looking over some, some of the crime photos, trying to figure out what's going on. Okay, and then we get, when she's in county, we get Cora. She's banging her, you know, she's banging all over the, the cell, crying and screaming because she needs her sleep medicine. She The medication that she's taking, we find out, are sleeping pills. We did find out a little bit earlier because he said it was no drugs in her system. She takes a sleeping pill sometimes to go to sleep. So that's what the sleeping pill, she was screaming and hollering and saying she needs a sleeping pill. But the whole time I'm looking at the screen like, baby girl, you in jail. I went to jail. Um, I guess I didn't do a story time for that. I went to jail for like one night. I wasn't even in that 24 hours, y'all. was for a ticket. But like when you in jail, they don't give a damn. Like they don't care about nothing. I called my mama and I was like, they're so mean because they be like, if you ain't about to die, them hoes do not care about nothing. She told me I need my pill. He was like, I'm sorry, we can't do it. I'm looking like, girl. You gonna be up all night, girl. Cause um, they don't give no damn about no sleeping pill, child. Girl, wait, well, you in jail, okay? So, <laughs> so she was screaming, hollering for her pill, and they couldn't do nothing for us. So she's constantly reliving um that the incident that occurred. And she's, the music that they was playing is, like, ingrained in her head. Like, she hears that music over and over again. She keeps reliving, you know, what happened and that pattern that she's seeing, y'all. This pattern is all up and through the episode, okay? So, the detective goes to a house, and the person who opens the door was the, was the lady that he was stalking earlier on in the episode, right? And she says, did it work? Did your wife take you back? And, um, he didn't say anything. And, um, he basically asked her, did she miss him? And she didn't really say anything. And she started talking about other men. You know, I got one that do such and such. So I was like, oh, okay, she's like a prostitute. At first, I was like, oh, she like a prostitute. But when we see him early in the episode, I forgot to say this part. He had these two fingers. They're, like, bruised right here. Like, at the beginning, you know, where your nail... And your finger meat right there, he's, his fingers are bruised right here. And he rubs them and looks at them. And, you know, we don't know why. So he's in the room with this girl, I mean, in the kitchen. And um, she started talking about other men. So I was like, oh, she must be like a prostitute. And his wife had found out, okay, and she left him or something like this. So, and um, he says, she's like, you can tell he feels some type of way. And she was like, you jealous? And he was like, she then she slapped him in his face. I said, wait a minute. This a whole different level. This a whole nother level. Okay, wait. So, when she slapped him, I realized that she's not just a prostitute. Guys, she's a dominatrix. Okay, y'all, I need to do a story time on this because in my old apartment complex, my neighbor was a dominatrix. You could not tell me this woman was not a dominatrix. And I'm going to do a story time video on that because let me tell you some things going on next door it it was some things going on over there honey so when she slapped him in his face i was like oh he a dominatrix she said get on your knees or he got down she didn't even say get on your knees she was just looked at him like you know what time it is okay um like hands or something she said and you know he got on his knees and she started stepping on his two fingers with her foot and crushing his hand, crushing his fingers. That's where he got the bruises for from. So he into that dominatrix stuff. It's a whole lot of y'all seen this thing about this woman online, and she um basically her job is that she solicits men online for money. These are men who have like fetishes to give women money. 
and she just collect money all day long. I was like, girl, are they hiring? What can I put in the application, girl? Okay, well, y'all just giving money away to women, and you just, that's what just, I said, but you know, she taking advantage of people, because that's, you know, some type of mental illness, you know, and you, you take, you just giving away your money. I mean, I don't know, I don't know. So, anywho, I digress. So, that's where his bruises came from. He into that dominatrix stuff. So he goes to the beach and, um, you know, looks at the crime scene. Then he goes to the home to talk to the husband. So the husband says he hadn't gone to her yet. Um, he says they were not having trouble. Their marriage was very good. He says he really doesn't know what to say. Um, he don't know how to make sense of it. He's just been trying to make sense of the whole thing, you know. He, and then he asked him, well, did, you, did she say anything? Did she do anything? And he was like, I mean, I didn't say anything because she, it sounded crazy when she was saying it. But after it happened, she went towards the girl. She did. She went back and she ran away back. And then or after he got her under control, she got up and she was going towards the girl. Or no, this is before he got in control. He was like, what in the world are you doing? She got up again. She went towards the girl. And so, um, and then when she got towards the girl, he kept saying, she was like, okay, it's okay. You're safe now. I got him and all of this. So, like, he, like she was saving the girl. So, we don't know if... We don't actually know if she, something is wrong with her, if something happened with this particular man, or maybe she's just projecting something that happened to her onto these random people. We don't know. So we're back in jail. Now she's having a childhood memory of meeting her baby sister. This was the weirdest. Oh my God. Okay, so uh, her mother's explaining, or uh, her mother and her father are like, you, sell, you tell her, no, you tell her. They arguing with each other. So she's in the hallway. She comes into the room, and her mother is holding the baby. And she said, you know, her mother is explaining to her that they have to do everything that the Lord says you know, they, they should do so that the baby can stay alive. She said her baby was sick. You know, when she had her, she said, you know, when I had you, you know, you took all of my strength. You know, you took everything from me. So I didn't have any more left for her. So now the baby is sick. And so um, she said, but she prayed and it worked. And um, she said, I prayed and prayed and prayed and it worked. And y'all, she lift up the cover where the baby was and the baby was dead. That was a dead ass baby. That baby was blue and green and like a whole bunch of different colors. Not white though. Like it was supposed to be. That was a dead ass baby. And I was just like, girl, you can't see. Something is wrong, honey boo boo. Baby. The baby ain't alive. So the baby was dead. It was really weird. And so basically she said we need to um do everything the Lord says so that the baby can be healed. So it can be, you know, oh my God, it was so weird. I just like, it was disturbing. So um, she will live. Basically, they need to do everything. So the husband uh, goes to jail. The husband comes to jail to visit her. And she's asked about the kids and everything. And um, she basically tells, he says he's confused. He's trying to figure out why she did this. And um, she said, I think something is wrong with me. And then she basically says, you know, I'm not going to blame you for doing whatever it is you feel you have to do. You know, I know you have to move on. You know, this is not your fault and yada, yada, yada. And he basically gets upset and he walks out. Okay, and this little piece of hair is bugging me. So, um, yeah, he said... Well, you know, because he was like, maybe you not crazy. Maybe it was just a moment. Maybe you basically saying, maybe you just flipped out. You know what I'm saying? You know, maybe it won't. But she and you know, she's just going on, and they give. He gets frustrated, and he leaves. Um, hold up. She says she's going to plead guilty. I forgot about that part. She says she's going to plead guilty, and he says something about a lawyer, and you know, she don't want a lawyer, basically. So, um. The detective gets called. He's at to the DA's office, okay? So he's there to talk to uh, the psychiatrist or something, a psychologist about trying to get the girl claimed as delusional. So they will um, give her bail or give her a lawyer, won't let her plead guilty or whatever the case may be. And the dude is like, you need to hurry up because, you know, you only got a couple more hours. So um, he visits the girl a part of the, the crime in the hospital. I mean, the, the girl, you know, who was kissing the guy that got killed, he visits her in the hospital, but he, and he talks to her friend. So he pulls the friend in and he's basically like, he doesn't remember anything. You know, I was too busy trying to stop the bleeding. And then he kind of trips out. He was like, you know, sometimes I, maybe your mind is playing tricks on you, but 
he was like, you know, because the dude was like, I mean, if somebody came up to me and stabbed me as big as he is, like, why didn't you try to stop her? Why didn't you try to help him? And he was like, well, the dude looked like he had it pretty much under control. He was like, but, you know, maybe my eyes were tripping or maybe I was tripping or whatever. But it just seemed to me like um, he said when she walked up to him and stabbed him, he grabbed her arm. So she stabbed him like. You know, like this. She coming from behind him. And he grabbed her arm like this. And he said, it almost looked like he looked at her. And because he was like, dude could have took her out, you know, easily. She was way, he was way bigger and strong to him. But she said, I'm sorry, but he said that he, she looked, he looked at her and he let go of her arm. So it's almost like she, he let her kill him. He said he looked at her like he knew her. So, did they know each other? What is it with this whole thing? Like, how do they know each other? Like, why would you let somebody just stab you in your neck? Like, what is going on, right? And so, um, she goes to the hearing, and when right when she gets ready to plead guilty or not guilty, um, it goes off. So, that's the end of the first episode. I thought it was pretty interesting and intriguing. Like I said, I like the fact that it's only seven or eight episodes, so... You know, they won't drag stuff out too long because I want to know, do they know each other? How do they know each other? Like, did they, did he notice that that was her? Like, or like, how do, how does that work? I need to know. I have answers. So I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you think um, down below in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Again, this show is called The Center. It comes on USA on Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. So it's a limited series. It won't be on that long. So um, I, I'm glad. I'm trying to do some different things. You know, most of my shows are, you know, have black people in them or, you know. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to expand a little bit and do some something else so i hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like comment subscribe i'll see you guys next week peace